everybody! So way back in September, Ave and Shanley filmed a co-worker picks my TBR video. Um, now it is several months later and Ave has finished all of those books, but we didn't want to put off filming um, their wrap-up together. So they had a Zoom meeting in which uh, Ave discusses all of the books that Shanley recommended to her and whether they liked them or not. So this is that footage. I hope you enjoy. Hey guys! Um, Shanley. I hope Hello. I'm pointing in Shanley's direction. <laughs> and, um, and I are here to finally do our wrap-up video um, for the books that Shanley recommended me months and months and months ago. I think Many it moons. was like October, September. <laughs> it was so long yes. ago. One of those two. It's been a while. Yeah. Um, and it's like, I mean, we both got incredibly busy and I think just forgot about it, but <laughs> it's fine. We're here. We're doing it now. Exactly. Um, and Shanley recommended me five awesome books. And the funny thing was I totally forgot that I was only supposed to read three out of the five. I ended up reading all five and some of those <laughs> books were quite thick. Yeah, no, I picked hefty choices for you too. And you just kind of went for it. So like, you know, I'm so that. happy that I read all five books because all five books were unique and like so different from what I'd normally pick up. And yeah, it was it was a really great reading experience. So I'm finally excited to talk to someone about it because I've just been like every like after I finished each book, I'd just be like, I need to talk to someone about it. And I'd just like scroll Goodreads reviews, but I was like, I really want to talk to Shanley about this. Thank so you. yeah. Here we are. Um, so what book should we talk about first? Um, up to you. Do you want to go and order you've read or order that like, you remember the best? Oh, that's a good idea. Order I read is, uh, yeah, it's a really good idea. Okay, so the first book that I read back in October, November, can't remember. Um, an amount of time ago. Yes. <laughs> was Good Omens um, by Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett. I'm so happy that you recommended me this book, Shanley, because I've been, it's been on my TBR for a really long time. The show came out and I was like, oh, I, like, I've, I've been wanting to read it. So this was the perfect excuse. And it was awesome. Yes. Um, I that was the one I probably wanted you to like the most. <laughs> this is very dear to my heart. And I don't know what would have happened if you disliked it, so. Yeah, I loved every bit of this book. Um, so I first started listening to it as an audiobook. Um, and I really, really recommend the audiobook because I thought it was awesome. Like, uh, whoever narrated it did such a good job. He had, like, the perfect, like, British accent to go with all the, like, little British quirks and humor um, in the book. Was it read by Neil Gaiman? Pardon? Was it read by Neil Gaiman? No, it wasn't read by Neil Gaiman. Oh, it wasn't, okay. Yeah, I wish, I wish it was read by Neil Gaiman, but it wasn't. Um, and yeah, it was, it was good. Uh, I'm trying to think of just like favorite scenes, favorite things about the book. Um, but like, it just everything about it was so fun. Did you um, see sort of how things were starting to come together? Or did you just sort of like, like, did you try to like piece together a sort of singular narrative? Because I, I find that with this book, because it tends to go all over the place. Um, like, some people try to find the links when they're reading it, and others just sort of like let the story fold out. Yeah, so I think when I first started reading it, I tried to like find the links and stuff, but I was just getting like so confused and so overwhelmed because there's like so much going on in the story. So I was like, I'm just gonna let it flow and like wash over me and that became like a much better reading experience and then um some parts of the audiobook were a bit confusing because there's like a lot going on in the scenes like change quite a lot like different things happen quite quickly so then yeah. I picked up the book and so I like kind of mixed it between listening to it and reading it and that also became like really enjoyable hmm. um and then when things like started picking up like near the end of it I just like read it because I could uh, it was just like, it was too much. <laughs> was it, the audiobook wasn't reading fast enough? No, I was like, I, I just like need to know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that was really good. I didn't expect there to be like children in the book. Like I knew it was about like, like Aziraphale and Crowley, like an angel and a demon. But I didn't expect there to be like a large portion of it to have these like really lovable kids in the book. And I, and I love 
what are they what are they called um the them the them the gang yeah i i loved their scenes i thought they were so funny and so cute um yeah uh yeah loved it and now i'm watching the show very, very slowly because i just kind of want to savor it but i absolutely love the tv show um azure fail uh michael sheen what? he is just so gosh darn adorable <laughs> he's perfect he yeah. surprised the hell out of me because i mean as like a doctor who fan i knew david Tennant was gonna crush it as crowley like that was no question i did not expect it's michael sheen right yeah i think so I did not expect Michael Sheen to be able to sort of like match him toe to toe. And their chemistry is perfect. Oh yeah. I love, I love that. So I, I, I really loved their chemistry and I really, really loved Crowley in the book, but in the TV show, David Tennant, it's, he's a bit too much for me. He's a bit too creepy. Oh, so interesting. Like, I have it like really, but I think it's because like Aziraphale in the show just like outshine is just like so lovable that I can't like look past him. But yes. as like I think I'm on episode four now, and like slowly like I'm really like growing, uh, like kind of like um, yeah, I'm really like liking Crowley a bit more. Um, but yeah, I just like cannot get enough of Aziraphale. I love him. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm completely biased. I adore. David Tennant and everything, and I don't think he can do no wrong. And I'm gonna, I think, always just have a bit of a crush on that guy. Uh, so from the beginning, I was just like, yes, give me more of that Crowley. But I, I, again, was super impressed with Michael Sheen and how perfectly he just matches the same energy yeah. as David Tennant sort of throughout the whole thing. It's excellent. Yeah. And I really am surprised by, like, the book, going back to the book and, and the story, like, I'm surprised by how often I think about it. So in, in the book, for those who haven't read it, um, Crowley is this demon and he like, how do you explain it? Like he puts like bad things into the world, but they're not like your like demonic, like your typical demonic bad things. Like they're like waiting on hold for like hours or like, a tra like he sets up like a traffic jam, like things like that, that get you really angry. And now when I like walk through the world and I notice something like that, I'm like, oh, like Crowley, this is all Crowley. <laughs> um, so I really, I really like that aspect of it. That was fun. Yeah, yeah it's clever. It's just mm -hmm. beginning to end clever. Yeah. Ooh, it's still and it, applicable, I feel like, to yeah. what's currently happening. I mean, not the pandemic thing, but just like yeah. life and reality, which is why I feel like the TV show works so well, even being made into this TV, uh, like the book, still works having been made into this TV show 20, 30 years after it was actually written. Like it's still yeah. relevant. It's still yeah. relevant. And that theme song in the TV show is awesome. Oh my God. <laughs> what, a, what a jam, honestly. <laughs> it gets stuck in your head so easily and you just sort of like dance along to it the whole rest of your day. I know I'm rewatching this series right now too. <laughs> like, yeah, it's stuck in my head. Nice, yeah. Yeah, I, I really liked it. So thank you for recommending that. I'm glad that I have been able to read it now. Um, okay, let's move on to the second book. Um, what is the second book that I read after that? Oh, okay. So the book I read after um, is Darius the Great. Darius the Great, yeah, yeah, yeah. Darius the Great, yeah. Is it Darius? Darius, Darius. I really like this book and I don't think I've ever read a book that deals with depression among kids um or among teenagers I think Darius is 16 in the book yeah. um so that was really enlightening like I learned a lot um it was yeah it was I found myself thinking about this book like months later, like after I finished it, um, coming back to um, different, I like wrote down different quotes, but there's this one quote that really stuck with me that really like hit me hard. And I was like, oof. And it was, um, it was something along the lines of um, suicide is not the only way you can lose someone that is depressed. Um, and I thought that was really, 
really powerful and I've never really thought about depression like that before. Yeah. Uh, I've read, um, like not a ton, but a fair amount of depictions of depression in various novels and even novels where like a character is clearly suffering through depression, but nobody quite names it as that. Mm -hmm. Um, and I've never read a book that depicts it in what I feel is so accurately, like how depression, like the forms it can take and how mm -hmm. it's not just like one moment in your mm -hmm. life and like, you know, you get depressed and then you get over it. Like it's there forever and it, it affects you in so many different ways and so many different aspects and it can surprise you as well on how it shows up in your life, like again and again and again. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I have depression, absolutely I do. Mm -hmm. And it shows up in many different forms, in many different ways, and I've never seen it so accurately depicted than in Darius the Great. Yeah, I thought that was, yeah, he, the author just did such a great job uh, writing it and uh, like having the main character Darius like, like have all these like complex emotions. I also really liked the, one of the messages of like you can be a a guy and still ha have emotions yes. and be emotionally intelligent and um i i feel like there should be more messages like that in our media because i like i yeah i i don't see it enough um so i really liked that as well and i love the whole like friendship aspect and like the reflections on friendship and what it means to be a good friend um i loved that the dad was not like he was kind of a flawed character i i like when parents in in books especially in kids books and like uh ya books um are a little bit flawed um because it's kind of like it it really like i don't know i feel like it's it's realistic um so i i like that the dad had kind of like an arc as well like he uh, developed as a character too throughout the story um, so that was, yeah, it was really good. Yeah. Yeah. It was, I love that everyone is very complex and mm -hmm. like, there's not a single person that seemed flat in that book. Like everyone has had experiences in their own lives that made them who they are and who the characters were seeing. And I, I love this aspect about slice of life books where you get the implication that this is like their, their lives, their stories are continuing. Mm -hmm. And this is just a moment that we're seeing. This is not like the be it all to end all moment in their lives and like, you know, happily ever after or whatever. Like, this is just one moment that will probably stay with them the rest of their lives, but it doesn't necessarily change them as a person. Yeah. And there will be a sequel oh, coming really? out this summer. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. It's coming out in August, and I'm very looking forward to seeing where the author takes this. Oh, very nice. Do you know what it's called? I can look it up. We can look it up. When we know, we'll leave it in the comments. Yeah, below. exactly. It's uh, Darius. The word Darius. <laughs> the title. That's all I got right now. That's awesome. Yeah, I. Yeah, that's great. I'm. Yeah, well, I think I'll definitely be picking up the sequel. It was. It was good. Um, and it makes me. Um, it kind of made me realize that I don't read a lot of books uh, about mental health, and I. Like I, now I'm like create, like I, like I want that more in books or I want to like find more books like that. Um, so yeah. Beautiful. Awesome. Okay. Um, so the third book um, is Through the Woods by Emily Carroll. <laughs> yeah. And this was one of the most gorgeous graphic novels I've ever like held in my hand. It was, yes, it is. It was it was beautiful, like all her, the ways that she used color and the way she like laid out all the pages and how the text and the images like kind of blended together with the story. Um, it was it was beautiful. It was such a great reading experience. Um, so that was really fun. Um, I think you mentioned that it was a bit scary. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't find it too scary, which good. is good. <laughs> no, that's good. That is good. I thought it was like kind of creepy. Um, and it like left like these creepy lingering feelings, but I wasn't like up at night, like having nightmares. <laughs> <That Okay>. was... <laughs> I was, um, when I read it, I was pretty affected by the tone, oh, um, okay. which I felt like each story definitely builds on the next one to sort of like amp up the, the, 
fright a little bit more with each story. Uh, the last story, not like sort of the epilogue bit, but the last story, um, not to spoil anything, but the one with the, um, the, the teeth. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, that one. Well, one I have, a, a teeth freak me out just at the best of times and like add the whole horror element that she's so good at. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, uh, just in bed, like, oh my God, what have I done? <laughs> it, it's so good though. But like my favorite line from that book, um, is like the part at the end, which I think just like really hammers home, like the whole tone she's going for in that book, which is uh, like, you have to be, a, you have to escape the wolf every single time, but the wolf only needs once. And it's just like, oh, it's so sweet. I love Emily Carroll's stuff so much. She's, she's impeccable. And I feel like uh, Through the Woods is a really fantastic example about how great stories can be when the author and illustrator is the same person because they can just not to you know bash someone who does the writing and someone who does the art you can get gorgeous stories as well but this is really showing like the strength of like what cartoonists can do who can tell the story and illustrate it at the same time because they just have full creative control over everything and it's just gorgeous mm -hmm. there's a there's a scene that kind of like haunted me when i finished the book it's the story of the two brothers. I don't know yes. if you remember. And uh, there is a scene of kind of at the end, I don't want to say any spoilers either, but the the second brother is like climbing into a grave and he kind of like lies in the hole. Um, and I thought that was pretty creepy, but <laughs> yeah, it was really good. I was really impressed with it. And I want to read more of her stuff now. Um, does she write? I can recommend you. Yeah, she's she's written, um, she's done illustrations for some things. She's done a couple of her own stuff as well. Um, and also, if you want just more of like her comic stuff, some of the comics found in Through the Woods, she also just published on her website. Okay. And she's got some really interesting web comics that she's like sort of played around with the whole web comic format. So like there's this one where they, you just see a room and you can click on different elements of it and it'll take you to a different part in the story. And like as you're reading all these different elements, you're starting to see a story unfold as to what happened in this room. Oh. But like she really just is so creative. So I mean, just go to her like author website, which is probably just like emilycarroll.com. I don't know. Um, but yeah, she has a lot of stuff even just there. But yeah, I can I can get you a list of stuff if you want more. Yeah, Thank you by Emily Carroll. Awesome. It was yeah, it was a very very cool uh, reading experience. I really liked that. So happy. Okay, fourth book is oh my god, I'm so excited to talk about this book. Is um, a face like glass by Frances yes. Harding. I loved this book. I couldn't <laughs> stop raving about this book to all my housemates after I finished it. So a little bit of a side story for this book. So I read half of it and then a few days later I was going to hop on a plane and it was like a five hour plane ride. So I was like reading slowly and I didn't want to finish it because I was like I want to like be on a plane and read this book non-stop for the next five hours and finish it. And so I was like looking forward to it and I was so excited and then I get to the airport and in the security line, I remember that, or like I, I for, like I noticed that I forgot the book at home oh. and I literally started, I cried in the security <laughs> line because I was like, I need to know what happens to never fail. She, <laughs> so many people are chasing after her. She's in this like dangerous area. Like everything is, is falling apart and I need to know. And, and, I'm not gonna know, I, I think I was returning home in like four days, so it's like not that long of a time, but I was just like, I, I was so devastated. That I'm so sorry. Stuck. And I was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> so I really, really love this book. I loved her writing. I was so blown away by how well she writes and her world building. Everything in this book made sense. Um, I loved the main character, Neverfell. She's this very innocent girl that gets like thrown into this awful, manipulative, scheming underground world um, full of awful people and I hated everyone except Neverfell. <laughs> um, and yeah, it was just, I, I really liked it. I really, it reminded me of The Golden Compass in a way, just because 
I see the golden compass as like Lyra being put into this very adult manipulative world and she has to like kind of figure figure her way out um, and it that's kind of what uh, a face like glass uh, reminded me of um, never felt was thrown into this world and kind of had to figure a way out of it um, and yeah yeah it was so good like everything I was telling one of my housemates like every single thing in this book made sense like even the light fixtures on the wall like played a part in the in the story <laughs> like yeah. that's just how good she was at tying everything together and making it make sense like it was awesome <laughs> oh she's an expert writer like how she's able to pull all these strings together and and accurately i don't know that's not even the right word but like somehow she's able to explain these incredibly bizarre images and imagery and worlds and it just you're like yeah that makes sense she's yeah. like i i can't i can't quite explain her writing either but yes like it's just it's beautiful and perfectly written and she's written so many things and i feel like not a lot of people especially in north america know too much about her um again i think i said this when i first recommended it she's i think better well known here for a book that won a ton of awards a couple of years ago called uh, the lie tree which is also excellent just totally different vibe eh, not totally different similar vibe to face like glass but not quite um yeah like i can't i can't explain it she just has a way of writing that is just it's lush it's gorgeous you want to fall into it it's ugh. She's amazing. Yeah. I could gush forever about her. Yeah, I, like, after I finished reading this, I was like, this is the only author I ever want to read now. Um, it was, it was great. Um, I just, yeah, like you said, like, there are things in this world, like, for example, um, in this underground world where the book takes place, people don't have emotions. Like, they can't display their feelings on their faces. Um, except never fell. Um, and like you read it and you're like, okay, like I like make sense. Like I can't really imagine it, but it makes sense. Um, yeah, yeah, it was good. It was really good. The only downside I think to this book is that it is impossible to make an adaptation mm -hmm. of it. Like there is no way that you can make an adaptation of this book and have it make visible, visual sense. Yeah. Cause how, how do you get people to not emote on their face? Yeah. Unless, Even an animation, like, how would you do that? Yeah, that's so true. Like, I can't, like, it's like, it is one of those books that's like, it was even hard for me to, like, imagine it in my head. Like, imagine the characters, because, like, emotions and, like, how facial reactions are just so, like, instinctual for us. Mm -hmm. And, like, you can't even, like, imagine that in your head. But their voices, like display like you can hear emotion through their voices but anyway this book this world is crazy it's um, something else yeah honestly it's, you can't compare it to anything else it is yeah. completely singular i know i i totally agree like i compared it to the golden compass only because of like a young girl innocent girl is like in a very adult world but it is like nothing like so it's like yeah, nothing. Like, like the situation is yeah. similar and that's pretty it's much it nothing like anything like i haven't read anything like it and i yeah and it's a thick book but i was like i can keep reading about never fell for the rest of my life i love it <laughs> it, it felt when i read it it felt like a series all in one book mm. you know like it felt like this easily could have been like three to four books of seeing never fell sort of like navigate this world and instead it's all in one book and which was why i feel like it's so satisfying to read Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah, it was really good. It was so, so satisfying. Yeah, thank you so much for that recommendation. And you've, like, introduced me to, like, a new favorite author. And, yeah, that was really fun. I don't think I would have picked that book up ever. So I'm so glad that you recommended it to me. I'm so glad you re you read it. Yeah, that's, that's a hard one for me to sell to people. Yeah. Uh, I've tried. <laughs> it hasn't worked out. And I'm so happy you gave it a shot. Yeah, that was good. Okay, um, next book and final book is uh, In Other Lands. Um, I'm blanking on the author's name. Sarah, uh, Sarah Rees Brennan. Sarah Rees Brennan. 
okay. I read this book in two days and it's a thick book and I'm a slow reader. So I, it's like a testament of like how much I love this book. I wasn't expecting to like this book, um, but I ended up just devouring it. It was so, 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 so good. Um, again, another book I've never really uh, read anything like. Um, and yeah, okay, so let's start from the beginning. The main character, Elliot, he, uh, when I first started reading about Elliot, I was like, I hate this guy. Like, I hate him. He's <laughs> sarcastic, he's mean, he's like this bratty, annoying, like, 13 year old, I think. He's, he's a smart ass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I don't want to suffer through like the next like 200 or 300 pages of, of reading about this kid. Um, but I kept reading it because like something was like appealing about it and I just like, I think it's his like scathingly like sarcastic remarks, like they're really funny, even though sometimes they're kind of mean. Um, and by the end of it, you just, you're just like head over heels in love with Elliot. Like I, I loved him and I was rooting for him and I wanted him to find the love of his life and like, uh, graduate border camp school and all this stuff. <laughs> yeah, I really liked Elliot. Um, yeah, I, there's just so much, there was just so much in this book. So each chapter is so the book takes place so the book is about elliot who ends up in a border camp school is that how you would describe it yeah it's, it's like a portal fantasy right so yeah. the kid discovers that there is another world that exists parallel to our own and if he so chooses he can go to school there in like yeah, fantasy land. yeah but the school isn't like Harry Potter fun magical school. It's like hardcore, like army training border camp school. It's like right on the edges of like, um, like our world and like this fantasy world. And these kids are like training to like protect their borders. Um, and to like kind of protect all these like treaties that all these like different magical creatures have, um, have between each other so that they don't like all kill each other or take each other's lands. Um, so like even that concept of the school I thought was really funny. Um, and every chapter is, there's like four chapters or five chapters in this book and every chapter takes, is like a year of his life in, in the school. So like year one, year two, year three, year four. And like every year he like ages obviously he gets older so at the end he's like 18 or 19 or something like that yeah. um so i really liked that aspect of it i liked how i could follow this like 13 year old boy's life till he's like 19 and see how he's grown and see how he's like learned and it's like your teenage years are such a formative part of your life and i really liked seeing that in Elliot and he's like such a grump when he's when he starts off and he's still kind of a grump at the end but he he learns a lot he like grows a lot he learns a lot about friendship about love and relationships I love that he was he was queer um yeah it was it was great it was such a like I cried at the end I was like I want to keep <laughs> I want to keep learning about Elliot. I want to keep reading about his life. I want to know what happens after. Um, but yeah. Was... I, I want to see him irrevocably put his stamp on that fantasy world, right? Because yeah. like, from the moment he shows up, he's just like, this is fun, but I think it could be better. Mm -hmm. And then makes it his, like, his own mission to single-handedly change the way things are run because he doesn't necessarily agree with everything. And he's not afraid to let people know that. Yeah. It was so just such a great character i do love that i did love that about elliot like he is like very stubborn he's a pacifist so he's against like all war and violence and this world is all about war and violence like they train there's like the warrior people and then there's the people who like write all the treaties and like kind of like the i don't know like the academics i guess yeah. um and he is a pacifist so he like very much is against that type of thinking and like what they do and so yeah he wants to make the world better but in his own 
kind of unique, sarcastic way. Um, the way I like to describe him is that he's like aggressively pacifist. Yeah. He's a pacifist. He believes in peace over war, but he will also cut you to pieces with his words if you go against him. Yeah. He's just so unique. Yeah. And I really liked uh, reading his, like, uh, yeah, I loved, I loved, like, when he would get, like, mad at someone or, like, mad at himself and, like, he would just, like, just rage. Um, and it, I just thought it was so funny. Yeah. Yeah, that's a very, it's a very different book. I would never, yeah, I don't think I've ever read anything like it before, so. <laughs> Like another book that feels like it was an entire series in one. Yeah, I I I prefer short series if series at all. So I always like these much more, and mm -hmm. I like getting like the full round out rounded out story. Mm -hmm. And yeah, this one this one also took me by surprise. I think I picked it up from the library on a whim and just fell in love with it, and then could not stop talking about it to people. And again, you're one of the first people to actually listen to my gushing and actually pick it up. So thank you for that. <laughs> <so much. laughs> Yeah, I, yeah, if you, if you guys, uh, like, it's, it's such a good book, like, I definitely recommend it. It's something I would never have picked up, and so I'm happy that I, I did read it. Um, yeah, it was good. <laughs> I'm so happy. Yeah, I want to, like, I wish we had, like, hours and hours so I can, like, go through, like, each chapter and, like, pick out all my favorite parts and my favorite lines. Like, there were so many funny things that happened in this book. Um, yeah, that's the thing with this book, right? Like, it's it's very serious at points, but it never takes itself seriously. Yeah. It yeah. like, it's like, it's political and it deals with like moral and ethical dilemmas and issues while also totally being a satire on the whole fantasy portal fiction genre. Yeah. It's, again, it's, it's so unlike anything I've ever read before. Yeah, I just like, I, I was so amazed by like, kind of like the author's like writing capabilities like how they were able to yeah do that yeah it was good mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. okay i really crushed this yeah um so yeah those are all the books that shan lee has um recommended me and i loved every single one of them don't ask me to pick a favorite I will not. <laughs> um but yeah Cool. Yeah, thanks, Shanley. That was really fun. <laughs> Thank you so much for reading all five when you didn't have to do that. I really appreciate it. <laughs> no, I'm so happy I did. And now I've, like, kind of branched out my, like, I guess, yeah. Like, I now I'm, like, more interested in, like, I don't know, like, reading related books and, yeah, kind of, like, it, it, it took me out of my comfort zone, which is, I think, the point of these videos or, um, these recommendations so that was mm -hmm. good okay uh cool so i think Corey will now say goodbye all right thanks so much for watching everybody i hope you enjoyed that video i'm currently working on the tbr that the girls picked out for me uh, a few weeks ago when this quarantine all started happening um and once i'm done reading those books uh we will upload another zoom meeting of uh me talking about what I thought of them. But yeah, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. Happy reading and thanks for being awesome. Bye!